All right, guys, so we are here with Zeke. We just did a little podcast um, about the 8.6, and uh, now we are driving his, his car. So this is a 1985 uh, Toyota Corolla GTS. GTS, all right, hatch. 267,000 miles on the odometer, but the engine is not original, is it? So the engine isn't original, yeah. So it's the oldest version. It's the big port three rib, but it's built, so, um, Tomei pond cams, total valve springs, heads professionally ported, okay. um, oversized pistons, bottom ends balanced and blueprinted. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, it's yeah. blueprint printed. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So what's the red line on it right now? It's still uh, um, factory uh, computer, so oh, it's still okay. uh, 7300. 7300? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. What are you hoping for power wise? Um, I don't have a good estimate. You have a good estimate yet? Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll see what what the what my butt dyno says okay. after I, after I pull on this thing. So the suspension is really special. It's from a new company, Annex Suspension Group. So it's their full coilover system, and it's the highest tier. So it's the uh, Motorsport 8K front Swift spring upgrade, and then the rear is the Swift Battle Garage 5.5K progressive spring. In the okay. Rear. And it's a one-way adjustable? Yes, one-way adjustable. Nice. I see you're running the, the OG, like, 10, 15-year-old Graham Light wheels. Yeah. So the, the original owner is uh, Hiromi of Wins Auto in Japan. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then uh, another uh, NorCal member, shout out to One Lung Daryl, he bought, brought them over. Okay. And then uh, he sold them to me, so that's how I ended that's up That's so with awesome. Them. So you have true JDM wheels with yeah. a with an actually like recognizable name attached to it. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So what's special about this, it's the Toyota Altezza 6-speed, but I have this Nissan S15 Silvia 6th gear set installed. Oh, very cool. So you got that highway cruising gear, huh? Yes, and then I transferred over the um, ZN6 reverse lockout mechanism. So that's oh why yeah, the that's why that worked. Yeah, the uh, ratios in this trans definitely suit the 4A really well. Okay, yeah. do you have an LSD in this thing? Yeah. Um, Tomei T tracks 1.5 way. 1.5 way. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right. So this thing should have really good traction. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tip for all those out there: skip to aftermarket LSD. It changes your life. Yeah. Don't yeah. Don't, don't do clutch packs. None of that nonsense. No, skip no, no, straight no. to uh, aftermarket totally LSD. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, what's your brake setup on this thing? So it's. RX-7 FC front calipers, okay. and then the Silk Road rear uh, brake adapters. It retains the same rear caliper, but you're running the S-13 rear rotor, which is a larger rotor. Gotcha, yeah. okay. So I did that to mechanically correct the brake bias. After after going with the FC front calipers, yes. right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. No ABS? Yeah, no B ABS. No power steering? All yeah, right. yeah. None of the stuff that gets in the way. Exactly. <laughs> Just you and the car. That's yeah, the way yeah. it's meant to be. Let's roll the window ever so slightly down. Let that uh, engine sing a little bit. And then feel free. Rev to the sky. Hit let's the, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free. All you got to do is say that once and I'm going <laughs> for it, man. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Initial D time. There we go. some nice compliance you can feel what the car is doing really well without it being uh, upset too much over the bumps yeah the owners of annex that's kind of their philosophy where like um, usable street ability yeah and um and your like super jdm like 12k coilovers yeah. um, are meant for like glass smooth roads exactly. whereas like a more compliant progressive rate yeah. is meant for this stuff like a uh, like a toge right yeah exactly Assuming this car, let's just put a number out there. Let's say this car weighs 2,200 pounds. Then the butt dyno tells me this car is making 
Close to 100 real horsepower. Okay. Oh, I can feel that LSD working. <laughs> When I first got it, because you know you gotta break it in, so everywhere's like comfort for Yeah, yeah. I remember like the owner of Battle Garage was in my car and he, was, he heard that thing and he was like, What is it too advanced for you? Because he always told me a T Track advanced, right? Oh, advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, 4AG. <laughs> Do this. You got this. Oh yes, here we go. The second to third shift. The revs fall a little kind of far, don't they? Yeah, so the T50 is the original 5 inch speed that comes in this car. Right, right. So 1, 2, 3 is uh, the ratios are similar to a T50, but it's the 3, 4 that's really close. Oh, okay. Yeah. Woo! Alright, get some air before I pass out. <laughs> Oh, this thing's so much fun. It's a nice balance between engine response. Um, I mean, of course it could use a little bit more power, but what, what 86 couldn't use more power, right? Coming into this video, I was kind of worried that the brakes would be like the one thing that would hold me back from driving it hard, yeah. but actually not too much. It's, it's got a very, you gotta put a lot of pressure into the pedal, but once you do it, it's, it, the car stops. And I think part of that is also the tires. Because the tires are so sticky, this is something I learned at the track last week when I tried a stickier tire on my car. Yeah. You get more braking power. You're that's not right. going to lock up the fronts as easily. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, the downside is you'll get your pads real hot, but it, it seems like your brake setup is pretty good for the canyons. Mm -hmm. um, suspension setup, definitely a thumbs up. Definitely a thumbs up on that. Um, this is a super old car. Keep that in mind. But the suspension doesn't feel super old. That's, that's probably the best way I can describe it. It's got good compliance. Transmission's fantastic. It's uh, it's way better than the T50, the stock T50. The gear ratios are better. Um, you get the, keep the engine and the power band more easily, especially that third to fourth. The second third is a little long, but not too bad. And like just the feel of the shifter is way better than the stock transmission. Throws are way shorter, notchier, more precise. Actually, the second to third is not too bad. I take that back. If you shift that 7400 from second to third, the revs drop down to like 5,000 something. Which is still like, you get reasonable power at that RPM. This car is so fun. I feel like Takumi right now. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we forgot is to get a couple waters. Oh right no, the, I was going to say the Eurobeat has to play in the back. The Eurobeat has to play in the back. <laughs> yeah. Man, I would totally throw some Eurobeat on this. Thing. You know what? I was going to say, I, I can't do that because YouTube would probably flag me. Oh. So we're going to have a couple Eurobeat uh, videos on Instagram coming your, your way soon, guys. I think in one way, like hardware-wise, like, like engine forward, I'm, I'm okay where, with where it's at. What would really wake up this engine, I need a standalone. Yeah, stock ECU, you're not taking full advantage of all the parts you put on. I know there's like way, there is a lot more in power and efficiency left in this engine. I'm sure. It's just like it's running on 40-year-old you know, right yeah. yeah. Like, this is before like what Tetris was invented, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, yeah, I would say I am more of a purist, so um, even if I was to choose a engine swap, it still would be a 4A variant. Okay, okay. So you wouldn't go like beams or anything like that? Or, um, or F20C. Or F20. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that's too much power for the chassis, if I'm yeah. honest. A momentum car needs to stay a momentum car. Sure, yeah. sure. I agree. Yeah. Once you put a S2000 motor in it, it's like, it's going to be even faster than an S2000 because the car's lighter. Oh. And with a chassis, is 30 years old, so like... I was going to say the chassis can't keep up with yeah, the power. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what I've seen in a lot of the videos of those of those swapped cars. Yeah. Like the engine's amazing, but the chassis really shows its, its, its age yeah. once you start pushing. If you talk to a lot of Corolla owners too who have swapped to different engines outside of 4A, they'll tell you they wish they could go back to the 4A. Because 
there's there's a certain like charm to having an underpowered momentum car. Right, right. Yeah. And it's not just any old underpowered engine, you know? It still has a uh, personality to it. You still gotta rev it high, it sounds good. Yeah. It's got that very like mechanical inline four sound that you don't really get from any other engine. It's like a very distinctive sound. Mm. The thing's gonna die of heat stroke. I know, I, <laughs> it's getting hot here. You can tell I'm a Corolla owner because I'm used to the heat. You're used to it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was an absolute pleasure, uh, Zeke. Thank yeah. you so much for letting me drive this thing. This thing's so bad. Oh, 996 or uh, 96, oh, 993. Sorry, that was uh, a geek. I'm a bit of a Porsche geek, yeah, so I geeked RS. out for a second. Oh, that's sick. The whole family's back there. Yeah. All right, so there's Matt's car. We got no parking out here. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this uh, very special episode. I haven't done like a Canyon review of a car in a while because I've been putting out so many track videos. It was good to get back out here, like not pushing balls to the wall, just kind of going at 70, 80 percent, just enjoying the roads, the scenery. Um, and what better way to do it than uh, in an original um, Corolla AE86? Just freaking awesome. See you guys next time.